In the heart of an era defined by power and innovation, the Buick 215 V8 engine roared to life, marking an evolution in automotive engineering. Born in the early 1960s, this marvel of machinery was not just any engine. It was a lightweight icon crafted from aluminum that set a benchmark for performance and efficiency. Its compact design and formidable power output challenged the conventions of the time, making it a favorite among manufacturers. As the backbone of many iconic models, the Buick 215 V8 soon became a symbol of American ingenuity, pushing the boundaries of what was possible for the road. But the Buick 215 V8 story wouldn't just end in its own backyard. No, the storied V8 would live the one of the longest production life cycles of any engine ever, in other manufacturers' cars around the world. This is the story of the little V8 engine that powered the world, the Buick 215 small block V8. And if you're looking for your very own 215 Buick powered car after this video, then there is no better way to do that than by using Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest is an absolute dream when it comes to searching for your next rare vehicle, as they have all the cars in one search. With Auto Tempest, you just enter in the vehicle that you're looking for and the radius of your search, and they will collect and display all the listings of those specific vehicles across all the major listing platforms, so you don't miss out on that diamond in the rough that you've been looking for. Auto Tempest searches everything from cars.com to eBay and countless others, and even links you to Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for results up to nationwide. So click the link in the description below to try autotempest.com or the Auto Tempest app and change the way that you shop for your next car. The story of the 215 cubic inch aluminum block Buick began in the late 50s. GM had been toying around with the idea of a more mainstream aluminum block V8 with a few concept cars, but in 1956, they decided to actually pull the trigger on getting a production version underway. General Motors was eyeing an all-out assault on the market in the early 60s with the newer, small-sized cars, and they needed a power plant that would be fitting for the smaller Pontiacs and Oldsmobiles like the Tempest and the F-85. GM didn't want another heavy iron block V8 to weigh down the front of these new cars, but they still wanted an engine option that customers could get excited about purchasing. And out of necessity, the Buick 215 was created as an aluminum block design, so it could be lightweight, which for an American car in the 60s was very atypical. Without any fluids, these new 215s would tip the scales at just over 320 pounds, which made it a featherweight when compared to even the later Ford 289 small block, which weighed in at around 460 pounds. This aluminum gem ran an oversquare bore setup with a 3.5 inch bore and a short 2.8 inch stroke, which out of a small engine like this meant that you really needed to rev them up to get the power out of them that you wanted. And speaking of power, this is where the weight savings benefits really became apparent for the 215. The 215 V8s came in a few stock power output variations, with the base model making 155 horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque through a two-barrel carburetor with a daily driver-friendly 8.8 to 1 compression ratio. Slap a four-barrel on that engine and power jump to 185 horsepower. Then there were even higher compression versions at 10 and a quarter to 1 and even 11 to 1 respectively, which peaked at 200 horsepower and 240 foot-pounds of torque. With the highest performance 215, you were looking around one horsepower per every 1.6 pounds of weight, which was leaps and bounds ahead of a 283 small block Chevy, which was closer to one horsepower per two pounds of weight in its hottest form. This 215 was a marvel of efficiency with its aluminum heads, forged connecting rods, and its cast crank. The inner walls of each cylinder were sleeved with iron sleeves to extend engine lifetime and reduce wear, as this was in theory going to be the new mainstay engine for all these more compact vehicles. Oldsmobile and Buick would actually have their own subtle differences between the two Buick 215s used in their cars, even though at the core they were exactly the same. Oldsmobile would rework the valve covers to make the engine look a bit more, well, Oldsmobile-ish, 
and also introduced a slightly different set of heads that utilized a six bolt design and a more wedged shaped combustion chamber compared to the five bolt design on the Buick engines. Pontiac, who offered the 215 in some of its cars, did not make any head design changes, and as far as I can tell, only used the Buick engines and not the slightly modified Oldsmobile versions. Not all was perfect with the Buick 215 though, at least from General Motors' standpoint. With the process of casting aluminum for these new 215 blocks being more difficult than just standard iron casting for most V8s, this meant that lots of 215s had to be scrapped for not meeting the porosity requirements for a properly cast block in terms of strength. Having to essentially remake a considerable number of engine blocks lowered the profitability, which the finance side of GM was not keen on, and understandably so. The Buick 215s also exhibited overheating issues due to clogged radiators, which stemmed from people using antifreezes that were not designed for an aluminum block but that itself was not really a fault of the 215. These issues were the writing on the wall for the 215, at least in GM's application. And by 1964, the combination of the profitability issues and also the fact that GM's smaller cars were now to become more medium-sized cars that could support an iron block V8 really made it so the aluminum V8 was no longer that needed from a business and weight perspective thus ending the story of the 215 stateside. However, in a stroke of shrewd business genius on the part of Rover, the UK-based car company, the 215 would live on. See, the English sports cars at the time were using a lot of heavy cast inline fours and inline sixes, which were great engines in their own regards, but the now dormant aluminum block 215 would weigh a little bit less than these iron block fours, and make significantly more power. So they wouldn't upset the balance of these British sports cars. And even better, this new V8 has already been engineered. The legwork was done, and Rover could save a giant sum of money if they could convince GM to sell them the rights and tooling to build the aluminum 215s, because GM was also no longer using them. It took Rover's chief of US ops, Bruce McWilliams, about a year to finally convince GM to sell them the rights, but they eventually got them. And by 1967, the aluminum block Buick V8 had a new lease on life, thanks to the Brits, and would first be sold in the Rover P5B sedan, which then trickled into the rest of its lineup. But by 1968, the British Leyland Consolidation was about to give this little V8 even more exposure. Essentially, all of the major British brands at this point were acquired and consolidated under the British Leyland Corporation, which meant one big company pulling the strings across the brands and looking to maximize profits. And this meant that the 215 aluminum V8 would go mainstream. This would become akin to the popularity of the small block Chevy stateside, with the 215 being fitted from the factory in Land Rovers, Range Rovers, V8 MGBs, Triumph TR8s, and even Morgans and TVRs. And the Brits actually kept on refining and improving this V8, enlarging it from the 3.5 liter initial displacement it had, all the way up to 4.6 liters in the early 2000s, when it was still sold new in select Land Rovers. Heck, the Buick 215 even served as the base architecture for the 1966 Brabham F1 car that won the Formula One championship which really sealed the deal for this little V8, making it the engine that could. Around 40 years of faithful service, across 3,000 miles away from each other, this little lightweight aluminum V8 is one of the best V8 power plants and, dare I say, engines ever created. From Formula One to daily commuters, this little Buick really deserves all the recognition that it gets. Thank you all for watching our first edgeed specific episode of our Rare Cars documentary series. Now, if you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. And let us know in the comments down below if you want to see more other engine videos just like this. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.